Hi Periscope, Juliana Page here. Welcome, welcome. We are on day 15. We are halfway there of our 30 days of Thanksgiving challenge. So we are challenging you all to give thanks every day for something. And this challenge particularly is focused on the word and how we can find ways to be grateful for what God is up to in our life. So without further ado, I am going to start with a prayer for us and then I am going to lead us into the message that we have today, something that we can give thanks for. So here it is. May God release a fresh outpouring of faith and encouragement on you today. Amen. May he bless you in your mind, in your body, and in your spirit. May he bring healing and wholeness to every part of your life. And may he motivate you to make choices that are life-giving and purposeful. May God release a fresh vision and promise over you. And may you know without a doubt that his plans to bless you and not to harm you are good plans. And that you do not need to worry. He has plans to give you a hope and a future. God is good, his promises are true, and he will make a way for you in Jesus' name. So Lord God, we invite you into this space. We thank you, God, for what you're about to share with us today, God. We pray that our hearts be open, that our minds be transformed, God, that our spirits be renewed, and that we leave this message with fresh faith, with a fresh anointing, with fresh strength, Father God, that you provide in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So I don't know who that is for, but God is making a way. I feel it in my spirit. So as I as I ease us into this message today, there are a couple of things that were on my heart to bring up. So I have a little story here too. One of them is that old things are dead. I know that maybe that's a given, but we have a tendency to still entertain old things in our mind. We have a tendency to still focus on things that are not bringing life, that are not producing any fruit, but they are dead. So the encouragement with that is recognize what is dead and lay aside every weight that reminds you of dead things or calls you back to them. So a lot of times, this is kind of like the tension that happens. There's the past that's back here, and then there's this future that is calling you forward, and you're stuck in the middle. So when you're in that space, where there's the unknown future in front of you and this known past that is no longer for you. You no longer are who you once were. You no longer can afford to think on the same level, to believe on the same level, to operate and function at the same level. So this past is going to constantly try to pull you back. But this future... As you fix your eyes on what's ahead, you can't entertain these dead things. So it's dead weight. So lay aside every weight that is holding you back. I hope that encourages you today. And then the message that I have today is called being uh, consistently confident. Being consistently confident. And so we are really going to focus on the gift of repentance. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But it's really learning how to go from faith to faith and what that means and what the gift of repentance means and what it looks like to live a life that is an entirely new way of living all the time. So we don't embrace being in a comfort zone, but we embrace being in the wonderful new. So a little side story that I promised that I would share. Um, in doing this challenge, I find that it's comical how I have been given so many ways beyond this space to be grateful and to be reminded to be grateful. And I will tell you, my attitude has been tested. My thought life has been tested. My relationships have been tested just in these first 15 days. And it's interesting. I wonder if it's because I'm focusing on it more. I can see where I'm not being grateful and where the opportunities are. But um, there was something that went down and that was outside of my control and there was something that I was believing for, and the way decisions were made, the way things unfolded, and this has to do with the work environment, the way that all played out was dumbfounding. To me, I could not understand it. I could not comprehend it. I couldn't, under, I couldn't really make my way through what was going on. It was completely beyond me, and the temptation was to get frustrated. The temptation was to think on things that aren't going the way I anticipated or to think on things that needed to be different for me to feel more comfortable or for me to know that I was right in a sense, right? So when God gives us a conviction, we want to see it happen. So if it's not happening, that can lead to frustration, but that's not me trusting God, but that's not me being grateful for what I have. But that's me fixating on things that are outside of my control and getting off course, right? So really allowing dead things to occupy my mental space and take over my emotions and 
really get me off track and get me out of alignment, if you will. So the interesting thing about that was as things were playing out this day and outside of my control and I was being tempted to fall into not negativity so much, but murmuring murmuring and complaining for sure and feeling like I was overlooked or feeling like things were not going according to plan, right? So as I am tempted to go into that space, that night I had to, well, I was given the opportunity to, do you see how we have to do this work? I was given the opportunity to write a lesson that I'm going to be presenting next Tuesday on gratitude. And it was so interesting to me because the very first verse that I opened up to in preparing for this lesson, here it is. It was coming from 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, and it says this, always be joyful. I mean, call out a girl right there, straight up. God just hit me right in my spirit. Always be joyful because I was not being joyful in that moment. Never stop praying. So rather than worrying, rather than murmuring and complaining, always pray, right? Be thankful in all circumstances, not just the ones that you like, not just the ones that you understand, not that just the ones that make sense and that seem logical, but be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So the message here was you are called, really all of us are called if we are believers, right, and walking out this Christ-likeness to always be joyful, to never stop praying, and to be thankful in all circumstances. And why I highlight that, because one, it is very practical. It lays out that that is how we are designed to live. And really, you can have and enjoy your life in abundance to the full if you operate with that focus. But the other thing that I want to point out here is that is something that we receive by faith. We can't always be joyful in in and of ourselves. We can't do that. And never stop praying. There are so many things that can prevent us from praying and being thankful in all circumstances. These are things that we work with God to do. He gives us strength to do these things and to really allow his character to be perfected in us as we do these things. As we choose and be willing to see his perspective and reveal his character and just shine as he's designed us to by doing these things, by answering the call, then he can really work through us and get what he wants to get to us. Amen. So I hope my story helps you a little bit, but without further ado, again, let's get into the word. So what I have for us today is, like I was saying, this capacity to have consistent and confident faith. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that I definitely lived as what they call a worry wart growing up. I was always anticipating what could happen or what I needed to do to make sure that that didn't happen. Or if that did happen, then I had to have five backup plans going over here. So I lived more like going from faith to doubt to unbelief and then back to faith. But I can't say that my faith was ever rooted in God during that time. It was rooted in myself and what I could do. But it was still, sometimes I felt optimistic, sometimes I felt nervous, sometimes I felt worried, right? So it was never consistent, solid, stable faith. And so I was very intrigued that that is a gift we are able to have. Yes, it's hard, but we are able to have consistent, confident faith. How do I know that? So this is coming from Romans 117, and it says this. Well, let me back up a second. So one thing that's helpful is really recognizing the good news and not being ashamed of it, because if we put off the good news and we don't believe in its power, then we're not really able to abide by it. We're not able to yield to it. We're not able to allow it to flow in our life. So let me start at verse 16. This is coming from Romans 1 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Christ, for it is God's power working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes. And here's what believes mean. A personal trust and a confident surrender and firm reliance on God, right? So let me give you those things again. You can test your believing muscles by putting it through this filter. Personal trust. Are you personally trusting God in all of your circumstances? 
Do you have a confident surrender? You know that apart from God, you are nothing. And apart from God, you can do nothing. So are you confidently surrendering all to him? Or are you trying to take control? Are you trying to take the wheel? And then this last one, a firm reliance. So rather than trying to pick up things and figure them out on your own and self-navigate again, there's a firm reliance in that God has gone ahead of you, that God is perfecting that which concerns you, that God is making a way where there is no way, that he's making crooked places straight. Amen? All right, so then Romans 1, 17. For in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed. So again, I want to hold up here that righteousness is not produced by works of the flesh, our own carnal nature, or what we can do or what we can achieve, or if we just fast more, if we just pray more, if we just obey more. It's not produced by that. It is given, right? God reveals it to us. And here it is, both springing forth from faith and leading to faith. So that's the idea of moving from faith to faith. So this consistent faith disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. As it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and live by faith. So the righteous, right? Those that receive the righteousness of God in Christ, right? That allow that to be renewed in them, to be transformed into that nature, they shall live by faith. So faith is something that we can't see, right? It is this evidence of things that we hope for, right? So the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen, if you want to have the full, the full definition here. So if we can't see it, faith is letting us believe in the unseen. So rather than like I was doing <laughs> or tempted to do rather than getting caught up in the way things looked rather than being worried that maybe <laughs> or or really being caught up in the details of it wasn't supposed to look like this or or thinking that God is not in control all of those things rather than going down that path I can believe in faith that God is still in control that God is still working all things according to the counsel of his will amen so here it is. We can learn to be consistently confident, not occasionally confident. So I don't have to have per perfect circumstances to trust God. I don't have to feel like all is well to trust God. I can believe by faith, by faith. So grace is the means, if you want to think about that way, grace, his grace is sufficient for you. So the grace that he's bestowed upon you is the means and faith is the way to the promises that he has for you. So here we go. Basically, the way to think about this, God will reveal things to you. He gives you the amount of faith you need to move forward. So here, here's how we know that. This is coming from 1 Romans 9. Or Romans 1 19 for that which is known about God is evident to them and made plain in their inner consciousness because of God himself has shown it to them so God will reveal things to us that we need to know he will give us knowledge he will give us wisdom he will give us discernment and that's why it's important to never stop praying because we can pray to God for these things wisdom is a great example we can ask for wisdom and he will give it in abundance amen that's the principal thing. We want that so that we know that we can be operating in his will and his plan for us. Amen. Okay. So now I told you that I really wanted to focus on the gift of repentance because faith and keeping active faith and learning to be confident is learning to be confident when we see progress or when we don't. And that's not always easy, especially when we're not seeing progress or when we've been waiting for a while. So what can happen is we can start thinking on things that are not healthy. We can start thinking on things that pull us back into that nature that we've been redeemed from, right? If we are the righteousness of God, which comes by believing, which comes from this personal trust and confident reliance on God, on Jesus Christ, right? Rather than yourself, if we are not focusing on that, then we can go back into limited understanding, into negativity, into doubt, into insecurity. But here it is. So this is coming from Romans 2, 4. God's kindness is intended to lead you to repent. And repent means to change your mind and inner man to accept God's will. Okay? So unless we repent, and this God gives us this willingness to do that, this willingness to change, unless we do that, 
then we could fall back into stubbornness. Then we could fall back into self-reliance. Then we could call back, fall back into selfishness and self-seeking behaviors. So rather than doing that, we are called to repent. And this is a gift because as we repent, God makes us new. As we repent, God renews our mind. As we repent, God stabilizes our emotions. As we repent, God inspires our faith that we've forgotten. God causes us to always be joyful. Amen. So I hope you can see that connection. Again, this is coming from Romans 2, verse 4. And it really teaches us to focus on whatsoever is lovely, noble, and praiseworthy. We can focus on whatever we focus on grows more. So that's really the distinguishing factor here. If you want to have consistent faith, it's really important that you learn to repent and constantly keep repentance as a daily practice so that you can be focusing on and meditating on the right things and have consistent faith, consistent, confident faith. Amen? All right, so I thought I might share a couple of the things that I was really getting as direction today, and I hope that it blesses you, and then we'll sign off here. So what I was getting, number one, focus on what you do have. This will help you to always be joyful. Focus on what you do have, not on what you don't have. Next, put your whole soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions into trusting God and his providence. Not your strength, not what's going on around you, but God and his providence. The next one, devote development to being in position and prepared for God to use. Keep this question forever in your mind. How can I serve you? How can I serve you? God, what do you have for me today? God, where, I'm, where am I in the way? God, get me out of the way. Renew my mind. Renew a right thinking in me, Lord, in Jesus' name. And then think about, like we just covered here, think about what is noble and praiseworthy, what is right and what could go right versus, ne versus meditating and really ruminating on the wrong things and starting to fall into murmuring and complaining and being ungrateful. So my prayer for you today is that you will always be joyful, that you will pray without ceasing, and that you will be thankful in all circumstances, in Jesus' name, may you recognize the gift of repentance and may you use it. May your faith grow. May it be a confident and consistent faith, in Jesus' name. All right, everybody, I hope you give thanks to God for this gift of faith and this gift of repentance today. This is day 15. My name is Juliana Page. If you want to connect with me, you can go to julianapage.com. All right, everybody, have a great day.